Good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon. Good afternoon, good afternoon. Let's see if anybody joins in this uh, wonderful day. What's up, Garrett? Good to have you. Good to have you. I'm going to um, hang tight for a minute, see if anybody joins in with us, and, and we will continue. Let's see here. Hey, Dr. K. Mama K, you're a mother of many. <laughs> oh, and we are so grateful for you. Super grateful. And I tell you, yesterday I had a, I got triggered a couple of times, and it was not fun. Um, but I did reach out to some friends. That was good. Hey, Chris, what's up, brother? Hope you're well. Yep. I think a lot of people are dealing with a lot of triggers and things right now. That uh, just because of what I, what I'm going to talk about right now, and it's, it's because this uh, you say this energy, frequency, vibration is 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 being raged it's not like there's another energy or another frequency or another vibration you know and we'll get into that but but so back in uh in 2015 uh, a lot of things happened in my life a lot of really cool things happened and a lot of things that back then i didn't think were too cool <laughs> like for instance i got banned from teaching or speaking or preaching or or having any types of meetings that on uh, in the church or any of the church's properties to include the house that had been given to me. And it was a very, uh, but the, it was very discouraging for me then. Now I see it all, you know, but it as uh, bringing me to the place I'm at now. And ultimately, um, I think we all want to experience wholeness. What's up, Darius? What's up, brother? We all want to experience and feel wholeness. You know, we've been promised wholeness. You know, and and I've found that the pain and suffering comes when I am either not letting something go, so I'm hanging on to something in the known because I'm really honestly scared to step into the unknown. So I'm hanging on to the known. I'm hanging on to the known, but that known is, is you know, because we're in, everything is constantly moving and, and vibrating and, and, and resonating, and there's a rhythm, you know? So things are moving constantly, moving. So when I'm hanging on, I'm actually kind of staying stagnant, and, that, and there's a lot of pain and suffering that comes in right there. And I'm not saying that is my true reality, the one that is truly me. But that, that one, that individual I that I thought I was, that individual I into itself, you know, the one I was taught and the one that I thought I was, another's image, another's image, an external image, you know, that, 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 that we can't blame anybody about. We embraced it. We embraced it. Even though you were a child, you embraced it. Yep, and you thought it and you believed it, and therefore it was and is. But um, in the other times that... that you know, I've experienced pain or, or strife or, you know, just it is when I've tried to make the vision happen in my own physical and mental ability. So when I've tried to make the vision God's given me or the idea that God's given me happen through my own physical and mental ability, I've run into many, many, many roadblocks. Because ultimately, that's not rest. I'm, I'm trying to make it happen, and, and you know, and um, and not allowing it just to unfold. And that's the key there. That's the key there. Just allowing it to unfold and resting in that feeling as if it's already done, right? But in 2015, I, you know, I want to talk about a couple things. I, at one point, and and this is gonna. I'll, I'll come back on this at the end. If you ever watch me, I kind of make a big loop a lot. <laughs> and I'll, I'll kind of, and then we'll bring it all in. But I was meditating on on Paul and, and you know, Peter, people walking into Peter's shadow and Jesus. And, and I was like, you know, 
inside, you know, I was having this conversation. And I was like, God, what did you do to them? I mean, what did you do to them? And they walked in such power. And and what did you do to them? You know, they they changed the the world. I mean, you know, and what we fail to see is all the the stuff they walked through. Because we think that just because, you know, we read it, it just happened like that. So we don't see that that time that went on and in, in the in the mental battles that went on. Here's a good one. I was reading the I was reading the testimony of John G. Lake back in the day, and and I and I read he had, you know he he said he, he he knew of another baptism, and everybody said no John no you got the baptism of the Holy Spirit that's what they called it back then. He, he, and and he, they said you you know you're speaking in tongues, you're you know people are getting healed. And, 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 and then John says in first person, he says, yeah, but people were getting healed here and there. The miracles were, it was, all of it was just here and there. It wasn't, it was as if he was waving a magic wand. So for six years, he cried out for this other baptism. And then it, and then it basically to make a long story short, he got blasted with this power that, that was undescribable almost. And after that, he said, I could no longer do business. I could no longer work. You know, it, it, everybody, you know, they ended up on their knees praying and, and, you know, things were happening. Hey, Tracy. And, and, and he said he had to go to his boss and he said, I, you know, I, I can't work anymore. And his boss said, take a month. And he supposedly was a wealthy businessman. And he said, take a month and you're going to want to come back because you're going to need the money. He said, okay. So in that month, he never came back. And he and his wife, they had five children, I believe. He and his wife decided they were going to live by faith. And I was like, good grief. What does that mean? I, I thought we were living by faith. <laughs> so basically living by faith and, 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 and they were going to sell all their things and God said, give it all away. And, and basically they knew that everything that was needed each and every day was provided. It was already there. It was already theirs. And they prayed and they prayed and things showed up when they needed the money to wash clothes, people, people would show up and say, "Hey, God put it on my heart to give you to be there, give you this money," and 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 they'd say it was the the exact amount we needed. When they needed a house, when they went to Africa, he said we were prayed up, is what he called it, prayed up. He said, "If you know what I mean by prayed up, you know what I mean." And at the time, I didn't know what he meant, but but God said he he said we chose to live a life of faith, to where this trust that God was taking care of everything. So they on the way to South Africa on their on the boat they prayed and I believe the prayed up there was praying until they evoked the feeling as if that that what they were praying for was already they were praying for a house. Sure enough, they show up on the on the docks and there's an old lady, uh, an elder elderly lady there and and she asked you know for them and and she shows up and and, and says God put it on my heart to give you a house you're gonna have a house so. <laughs> That was living by faith, and God says, this is how you're going to live. Speaks to me that way. And I said, oh, my God, it really freaked me out. It freaked me out. I'm not even going to lie to anyone. It freaked me out. It scared me. And I, and I said it out loud. I said, well, if that's how I'm going to live, you're going to have to do something here because because that scares me. And um, I was just being honest, you know. And, um, and it scared my wife, my ex-wife, my wife at the time. It scared her when I told her about it. Because it means I have to let go of everything I know. And the known is comfortable, even though it may not, you, you got this feeling inside there's something else. There's more. This can't be it, you know. But the known is comfortable because we know it. Even if it's not serving your, you don't feel like it's serving your greatest good. And you're in pain and all these things are happening the known is comfortable and, and we're scared to step in the unknown. So we're being we're being pulled along and drawn into this trust where we can step off into the unknown, letting go of the known. And and so, you know, that happened, and this is gonna come together with what I'm talking about. During that period in 2015, when I was meditating on these men, and I said, What did you do to them? I heard a voice. The voice, you know, the voice, God, the voice says, which sounds like my voice, 
says Alec, I saved the best for last. You're the best that I've, I've saved for the, the last. So the best for last. So there's a last. Now, most people have taken that last to mean the end of the world or the end of time or the end of, you know, in, in a negative way. First off, the end of time is in the now, the present moment. The end of an age or an era. So the last, the, the best that's been saved for last, there's an end to an era or an age or a way of life, a way we've been operating. We're at that point. That's where we are. And you are the best. He changed the water into wine. And the man said, you saved the best the best wine for the end of the, wed, uh, the wedding ceremony. Most people used the best wine at the beginning and gave them the, the, the crappy wine at the end. Because then they would already be, you know, in whatever drunken state or whatever they put in that wine, you know, doesn't matter. So the best wine was saved for the end of an age. This wedding, this ceremony, this, this coming together. So, so that tells me what it was spoken to me is there's a last. There's an end to something here. There, there, there's, there's an end to an age or an era. Now, during the same time, period I was working uh, for uh, and for the fatherhood initiative. I was going into, into jails and, and teaching guys what it meant to be a father, which was very crazy because I don't think I knew what it meant to be a father. <laughs> I had one uh, child, my child, Bella, and I was in Selma by way of separation uh, and uh, basically homeless and, and, and houses were being given to me and miracles were popping off all over. People were getting healed left and right. And just, I mean, and and at, in, in the same very time is when I started to dig in to my value, who I am, how I'm seen. And, and, I, and what I did is every morning I'd wake up and it, repetitively, I'd wake up early and I would read these I am statements. And I wouldn't just read them. They would, one would be highlighted to me and I would chew it. I would I'd, I'd, I'd make it my own words and, until it just felt like it was a part of me, you know, me. It was resonating so much. I am this, I am that, you know. And um, and after about 30 days of that, during the same period, I woke up one morning and I sat up in the bed. And this is how I said it then. I said, Lord, something has happened to me. Whew. I just felt, uh, what happened right there when I said that, I, I felt electricity just, it felt like it rose up through me and hit the top of my head and it was all over my skin. I, all my hair stood up. So that's what happened there. I like to explain these pe things to people know. And I sat up and I said, something has happened to me. And I don't know if I can ever explain it. And I don't know if I ever need to explain it to anyone. And I said, I feel like I'm you. I feel like I am you. And you are me. I was back in 2015. And I started to teach out of 1 John 4, 17. As I was told, I was told that I was told to, that to teach people how to hear the voice within them, to turn them within. So I started teaching this. And you start teaching that, and, and I would, I would, I would say things in the class I was teaching. I'd, I'd, I'd say, "Look, guys, I, just make this statement," because I've been making it, and, and at first it felt very uncomfortable for me. It did not feel natural. It felt mechanical. It felt like I was doing something wrong. Say this: "As he is, I am. I am as he is. Exactly. I am he. He is I." So, so I would make these statements like this, and I would get to class to say it. And man, you talking about uncomfortable? You could feel the pressure in the in the in the room. You could feel the resistance. You know, like people thought they were doing something wrong. And and then and then there was something. And then all of a sudden, the talk started going around, and and people were going to the leaders of the church, and 
and telling them I was teaching people they were God. And, and all of a sudden the meetings started behind the scenes and, 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 and then all of a sudden I started getting called into three hour long meetings and well, you can say this, but you need to add this to it, brother. And, and all of a sudden I, now I'm, 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 I'm rebellious, you know, because I'm not doing what they're telling me to do. Well, 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 the thing about that is I've never done what I was told to do. <laughs> I've never conformed to, to, to um, systems, the educational system, the church, the, the government. I have never, I got arrested. I got arrested 18 times by the time I was 21. <laughs> I, if you told me not to do something, I was doing it. You know, that's how, that's how I am. That is part of the unique expression of the one that I am. I wasn't meant to conform. I'm a, I'm a forerunner. I'm a pioneer. That's who I am. I'm very stubborn. I am. I, I, I'm very persistent. Not stubborn. That's, that's, people use that in a negative way. I'm very persistent. And guess what? My children are too. I mean, they're, and, and, and times 10. <laughs> They're game changers. They're, 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 they're here to, to bring forth something brand new that we have not experienced, the unknown. But there's a letting go of the known that, that has to happen here. That's been so hard for us. So I'm working for Fatherhood Initiative, and, and, and one day um, I drift off into a daydream. As I'm sitting at the computer, I was, I was typing something up from uh, – from, from uh for work and 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 I drift off. I mean I drifted off into a daydream. Now here's the thing about daydreams. Let me tell you about them. Daydreams and I'm parking the trailer while I'm talking to y'all. <laughs> daydreams are trances. Good afternoon, Penny. And I have if I haven't said hey, hello, I love you, peace, namaste. Yeah, uh, I honor every perspective. I'm trying to honor every perspective here because this is part of it. So a daydream is a trance. But if you're unaware and you're just, you know, you won't be aware of what's what you're hearing, seeing, or being given right there. Every time I drift off, there's something. There's there's a, there's a feeling. There's a there. Sometimes there's whole messages. Sometimes I'm hearing like a sermon. Sometimes I'm being given information about things I've never, ever heard before. But the key is to be aware of that and to catch it and bring it back. Now, you're really not going anywhere. King David said, if I ascend into the heavens, you're there. Or if I make my bed in hell, you are there too. The lower earth. And the highest of heavens are all within you. So King David made that statement while he was still alive. So where was he going? He was ascending into into the, the one mind and one consciousness, you could say. You could say into divine mind, into the highest heavens, past thought, into this place where everything just is. And you can see things there and you can hear things there and, and, and you can be you can you can bring back these treasures and things. Why though? Why? And that's what I, I want to talk about. So I drifted off and I was given a, a I came when I came back, I thought I was gone for, for hours. I came back, it was like three minutes. <laughs> and I had a full I, I typed everything that I heard while I was off. And I had a full page. On, on vibration, on resonance, on syn- synchronization, on harmony, and on alignment and agreement, on energy, on frequency, and ultimately on, on um, the destruction and nullification of death. I was told there would be no more death. And, I, and of course, me, you know, I, I write it all down. I was told everything. And, and this, listen, this is before I knew anything about any of this. I did not know anything about frequency and, and vibration and sound and, har, you know, harmony and agreement and synchronization and synchronicities and, 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 and all the in life and all this. So I was told everything puts off a frequency and a vibration. And I was told when I was off, I heard 
a voice said, I've sent my angels to synchronize mankind's heart with my heart. And then I started hearing things like, let your thoughts be my thought and your ways will be my way, Christ, Christ. And you'll be led forth by my peace. And you'll go forth in fullness of joy and the mountains and the hills will break forth in song before you and the, and the trees will bend over and clap their hands. It's this alignment, this agreement. And then I'd hear things like, I, I ran out of the house one day because I was in complete fear. And because I had started moving in the homeless and, 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 and I heard this voice telling me that I'd never see my child again. And, and, and it, and it scared the crap out of me and I, and I couldn't get rid of it. I could feel this fear. It was crazy. And I, and it was very unusual to me because I had not experienced it like that before. So I just ran out of the house. And as I began to walk down the road, I was out in the sun, the trees, the, everything's putting off this, this vibration and this sound, and this energy, and all of a sudden, all of a sudden, I heard, um, Alec, just believe in what I've said, and I said, and I said, well, I thought I have believed, how do I believe then, I don't, I don't understand, I thought I am believing, and, and then all of a sudden, I heard, Alec, just agree with me, who am I agreeing with? What is this agreement? Who is the me, if not me? The one who is true. The Christ in me. Who am I agreeing with? The I, within the I. The self. The one and only being expressed as me. Agreement, agreement. And so I was told that, that all, all these lower vibrations and, and these slower vibrations and lower frequencies would transmute into the highest vibration, the fastest and highest frequency. That truth transmutes all into the truth that it is. Now it's already true. So what's really happening here? It's being unveiled. So God is all. Hey, Jessica. Money maker. Love you. Um. So all, so God is all, God is all. If you need a scripture, I'll give it to you. All things were made through God, source, energy, love, light, life. And not one thing that was made was made separate from God, source, love, light, life, the one and only being. And really what it says there is all things transition from one condition into another condition through the one and only being, one with and as the one and only being. So all things, all things are the one. Now is the one true? Yes, therefore all things are true. Not one thing is untrue. It is my judgment and my perspective of what is true is the only thing that changes in, 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 in my judgment and in my perspective my judgment of what is true, how I have perceived what is true, has been off. Because I was taught another's image. I was taught another. Therefore, I have been projecting my thought images onto the canvas of truth. Seeing the very thought image, seeing the very thought image as the truth, but it's been a misrepresentation of that truth, of reality. Therefore, it's an illusion that I've been perceiving and judging. So all things are true. The only thing that is untrue is that which I have perceived or judged to be so. All things transition. It's the same thing as the first law of thermodynamics, which says that energy can be neither created nor destroyed. Eternity, eternal life means you have no beginning nor ending. Energy can be neither created nor destroyed. Energy only transfers conditions. Or forms. And because all things already are, because in the beginning or before the beginning and source in eternity was this word. And this word was the thought and idea of God itself, visible. And in the beginning, so this word was the formless, the expression, 
and the form. The formless is the thought and idea. The expression is the sound and the movement of that thought and idea. And the form is when it's formed up in this visible substance. And that's and because of this faith, this substance, we know that the worlds were framed up, formed up by the sound of the thought and idea. So all things transitioned. There's a continual unfolding because everything, okay, there's only one light, but there's many angles of that light. So the angels that were sent to synchronize the hearts of mankind with my heart are the angles of the light, which are you and me. There's many angles, one light, one light. There's one vibration, but there's many speeds to that one vibration. There's one frequency, but there's many different levels, lower and higher of the one frequency. There's one Christ anointing, but there's many different unique expressions of the one anointing of the one and only being. There's one and and there's only one God, one spirit, one breath, but there's many different expressions of this. Try to kick me off. Okay, I'm back. I'm back. So. I heard that the angles, each angle of the light and perceived as that unique angle of the light that each are, are here to synchronize our hearts with the one heart, with the one mind, with the one thought, with the one idea of the one and only being. So we're at the end. Remember, I said he saved the best for last. Doesn't mean it's the end of all things. We're at the end of an age or an era. So think of the caterpillar as the current age or era. The caterpillar structure is the world structure. The caterpillar systems are the world systems within the caterpillar. But within the caterpillar are these imaginal cells that carry the memory or the information of the butterfly always in the caterpillar. And over time, what happens as the caterpillar goes on, the caterpillar's own immune system is a system within the structure of the caterpillar. So the world structure's own immune system, be it whatever system that is, you might say it was the, it, you might say it was the organized church or the government. So within that world structure and that world is the world systems the educational system, the financial system, the religious system, the entertainment system, which includes media, the the family system, and the economic system, and the medical system. Seven of them. And these systems within the caterpillar in which the immune system is in charge of ridding the caterpillar of any foreign bodies. The immune system of the caterpillar would rid the caterpillar of the imaginal cells because the imaginal cells carry information. They carry a a memory of something way outside the caterpillar structure. So the prophets and the visionaries, Jesus being, being one of them, I'm not degrading Jesus here. Now, Jesus is the man now. Come on. But listen to what I'm saying here. Martin Luther King, Bob Marley, John Lennon, JFK. Um, Many, 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 many prophets of old. Many people were burned at the stake because they were mystics. The Essenes were all murdered and killed by the system, the immune system of the world structure. Why? Because they were visionaries. They saw something way outside, way outside, crazy horse, sitting bull. They saw something way outside the world structure. Therefore, the immune system of the world structure has been ridding the structure of the visionaries. But here's the thing about the visionaries. Here's the thing about the imaginal cells in which you are. We are very persistent. I said I'm stubborn. We are very persistent and we never give up. We never, ever, ever, ever give up and we never shut up. And we're bringing something forth that is so powerful. The world has never experienced it before. The entire, here's what's different about this age. It's the entire world. It's not just 
a, a, a country and a movement and it's the entire world. So here's how we discern the times. The caterpillar, when it has consumed as much as it possibly can, and it's so fat that it cannot consume anymore, the world structure is so fat that it cannot consume anymore, the energy of the visionaries, the imaginal cells in which we are, have begun to, we've begun to group and we've begun to understand each other's perspectives and listen to one another and share with one another because each are an angle of the light and each have a different perspective of this light that is needed so we can understand the totality of it. So the visionaries and the imaginal cells start to group together. They start to see, they, they start to see this oneness and start to experience and start to put this energy off emitting this high frequency and this fat, very fast vibration, this electromagnetic energies because we're made of solid and liquid crystal structures. So thoughts produce electricity and the vibration produces the electricity and the electricity moves through the crystals and produces light, electromagnetic energies, images. And this is going out because we've, we're coming together. And what happens within the caterpillar and what's happened within the world structure is the immune system that was ridding the caterpillar of the imaginal cells, the visionaries, the prophets, killing them off, getting rid of them, is overwhelmed by the energy, this energy. This inner chi, this inner G, God, this anointing, the unique expression of the one that you are and that I am, that we're all honoring and respecting now and, and understanding one another. And, and this energy, inner chi, overwhelms the immune system because we are many and we're not stopping we're, we keep going, we're persistent, we're stubborn. And we just keep talking and we keep speaking about it and we keep sharing with one another and we just keep, keep, keep going and this energy overwhelms the immune system that can no longer rid the caterpillar of the visionaries, the imaginal system. The world structure can no longer rid itself of us. And so the caterpillar goes into the cocoon, the still, dark, quiet place. Almost... Um, almost uh, isol isolated, free from any disturbances, fasting from every external need, right? It goes within. And in this place, the caterpillar liquefies. The caterpillar lets go of what was known, the caterpillar structure and systems. And in the letting go, the caterpillar liquefies. It, it becomes a blur. You don't see the individuals anymore. We're one body remembering. Member, remembering each and every part as one. That's the liquefaction. It's happening. It, 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 it becomes transparent. And in that liquefaction, it embraces the imagination, the vision. Peace on earth and goodwill towards all. One mankind as one light, as many angles of the one light. We all sit under the same tree, the tree of life, together forever. We're, we're, we're unveiling what's always been. And, and, the, and what comes out of the cocoon is something brand new that the caterpillar had never experienced before. It's flying free now. It's the butterfly. The world structure must be let go of. Our current reality must be let go of as we transition. And there's nothing we can do. It's happening regardless. You can't speed it up and you ain't going to slow it down. It is time. On this day, you will know, you will experience that we are one, John 14, 20. It's where we're at, and it's a beautiful thing.
So peace. I hope that helped you out. We're transitioning, energy evolving, God evolving as a body. And what does the butterfly represent if not freedom, if not peace, if not a gentleness and a lightness, right? Peace. Hope that made sense. If I hope it helped. Hope you got some daydreams, trances while I was speaking. I hope you got some revelations, some lights went off, um, because that's what happens um, when I speak. <clears throat> hope you felt yourself. Hope you felt love. And ultimately, this frequency, the one frequency, we're moving into right, to love, the experience of what's always been. So if you have any questions, hit me up. You want to talk about it. I love that because it unfolds more. I had a great conversation with uh, Julie, I think we called earlier. And it just, it, as we speak to one another, it it just unfolds. So we need one another. And if you got something, please share with us because we need each other, each other's view and perspective. And we can honor these things. Love you. Peace. Have a good day.